Okay. Two more minutes. أسعد الله مساءكم محاضرة الليلة طبعاً بعد أن قضيته إن شاء الله عيد سعيد عيد أضحى مبارك محاضرة الليلة is a very new and up-to-date subject it's called psychoneuroimmunology يلقيها علينا أستاذنا الكبير الأستاذ الدكتور وليد سرحان وهو غني عن التعريف تفضل استاذ فريد شكرا دكتور نزار مساء الخير جميعا اهلا وسهلا بكم الحقيقه آه هذا الموضوع هو يعني قد نقول سايكو نيورو اميونولوجي او نقول سايكو نيورو اندو اميونولوجي واذا اردت ان تختصر الامر تذهب للاي اي فيقول لك بأن نيورو اندو اميونولوجي is an interdisciplinary field of study that encompass the interaction between the nervous endocrine and immune system in health and disease. The field explore how these interrelated systems communicate with each other through various signaling pathways and feedback loops. Researchers in this field aim to understand how the immune system an endocrine system impact the nervous system and how this communication can ultimately influence disease such as autoimmune disorder, neurological disorders, and cancer. Neuroimmunology play a critical role in the development of novel treatment and preventive measures for those conditions, as well as leading to insights about the connection between the mind and the body. An area of uh, interest to me always is this connection. Also, AI says there is considerable evidence to suggest that immunological conditions such as autoimmune disease, infectious disease, and allergies can increase the risk of developing psychiatric disorder. These conditions affect the immune system, which can result in increased levels of inflammation oxidative stress, and other pathophysiological changes that can negatively impact mental health. For example, autoimmune disease such as multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis are associated with increased risk for depression, anxiety, and other psychiatric disorder. Similarly, infections such as HIV, hepatitis C, and uh, Lyme disease have been linked to higher rates of depression, anxiety, and cognitive impairment. Allergic conditions such as asthma, like asthma, allergy, clarinatus, and eczema have also been associated with increased risk of psychiatric disorder, particularly depression and anxiety. The exact mechanism underlying association between immunological condition 
and psychiatric disorder not really really yet fully understood but it's thought that the cytokines and other immune modulators play a role in regulating mood and cognition furthermore chronic inflammation and oxidative stress may cause damage to the brain leading to expression of psychiatric dis disorder or symptoms Overall, understanding the relationship between immunological condition and psychiatric disorder is essential for developing new interventions that target both inflammation and mental health symptoms, and so it can lead to improvement in outcome for patients living with these conditions. Also, it, the immune system and inflammation have been increasingly being recognized as a potential contributor to the development and progression of psychiatric disorder. Studies have shown that people with psychiatric disorders such as depression, bipolar, schizophrenia often have elevated level of pro-inflammatory cytokine and other biomarkers of inflammation in their blood, which may suggest a chronic inflammatory state this inflammation may co be caused by various factors, including chronic stress, poor diet, and sedentary lifestyle, and may activate the immune system and ultimately lead to changes in the brain of and behavior. While the exact mechanism of how immunological changes can contribute to psychiatric disorders are still being studied, it is believed that inflammation and the immune system play a role in the regulation of mood and behavior and cognitive processes. Elevated levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines have been shown to affect neurotransmitter system, increased oxidative stress, and disrupt the integrity of the brain blood-brain barrier, leading to neuroinflammation and neuronal dysfunction by better understanding the immune system role in psychiatric disorder Researchers hope to develop new treatment and therapy. So you can see in these three slides, artificial intelligence a way of looking at the matter. A, I have been interested in this subject since 1992. After I attended a lecture in Milan in the World Biological Psychiatry, by uh, a Japanese scientist who, who won a Nobel Prize for science. And it was actually one of the most confusing lecture I have ever had. And after I left the, the room, I bought three books on that day. There was no internet yet. And it's, it's a fascinating area to see how the whole body is connected. And even things like daily notes we always hear, people would say, I didn't feel well, I took a couple of Benadol, I got better. We thought this is placebo. It doesn't seem to be placebo. It seems there is an effect. Somebody took to take baclofenac and feels better. So psychoneuroimmunology or PNI is also called psychoneuro, psychoendoneuroimmunology uh, or psychoneuroendoimmunology, PNAI, deals with the study of the interaction between psychological processes and the nervous immune and immune system of the human body. Until 1970, it was thought among the modern Western medical community that the immune system function without any influence from any other part of the function or functions of the body. Robert Adler, Adler in 1975, coined the term psychoneuroimmunology to show that there exists a link between the way people think about their health the way people think and about their health. So that's why psychoneuroimmunology plays a very important role in research of mechanism and treatment of different diseases. In a study, that, in this the study of interaction between 
psychological processes and nervous and immune system and human uh, body for different diseases. If you take it uh, in this uh, diagram, here are the physical and psychological stresses. If there is environment, environmental effect, there is brain effect and body. All this affect behavior, awareness, consciousness. Here are neurochemical changes and psychic consequences, immune, endocrine, metabolic changes, and genes. Well, simply looking at this tells you there is no, no system in the body works on its own. Everything is connected. And probably that would explain many observations we as psychiatrists have observed over the years. For example, the, the idea that uh, uh, you give sertraline for a patient who has no psychiatric problem and his blood pressure and blood sugar becomes controlled. That definitely says something about the effect of SSRI. In, in the body, not necessarily in the brain or the neurotransmitter. So in health, so there are all these factors coming together. One never can never exclude anyone, any, any one of these circles. If you take a hierarchy, there are emotional level upper, in the cerebral cortex, then the, you have the C C CNS cytokine reflected to hypothalamus. And through hypothalamus, it reaches everywhere in the body, from bone marrow, lymph nodes, thymus, spleen, immune system, uh, progesterone, estrogen, uh, adrenal glands, th thyroid glands, uh, cytokine. And this is uh, a simple diagrammatic uh, way of understanding this complex hierarchy. Also, you can look at it with uh, this sort of nervous system on, uh, on one angle, endocrine system and immune system. And this is uh, definitely, you can see the effect of a negative stress on all of these systems. And for example, the positive effect of yoga on all these systems. The brain is the master controller of the nervous endocrine and immune system. However, the brain is also a target for these systems subject to both protection and damage. So it's not one way from up down, it's bi-directional. And at least you could Imagine the HBA axis that we all know and how this could carry the influence of the environment, uh, stress, uh, life, uh, pressures, etc., and make it physical. There are many autoimmune disorders, and if you study any of them, you will find this list of syndromes and uh, disorders all have psychiatric manifestation and sometimes present for the first time, like in systemic lupus erythromatosis, uh, could the presentation could start by psychiatric manifestation and end up by dementia, or even diabetes type 1, type one uh, where the prevalence of psychiatric disorder is extremely high. So how would the immune system influence psychological symptoms? The immune reaction could do that through four channels, activating microglia, altering HbA axis functioning, altered by tryptophan metabolism, direct neurological monoaminergic effect, and all of these will lead up to neuropsychiatric effects. 
So this is in a way starting from the immune system, not from the neuron, uh, from the brain. And you could see that easy to understand that these four channels uh, can work together. If we take the physiological level of IL-1 beta, TNF alpha, uh, these are their levels is helpful to maintain plasticity, LTB, uh, high pathological levels of IL-1 beta inhibits LTB is uh, TNF alpha IL-6. And when you look at cytokine effect on hippocampus, you, it's quite clear that it correlates with depression as uh, uh, been shown in, in many studies. And if you take the effect on tryptophan metabolism, uh, there is definite uh, evidence that a tryptophan uh, changing to in a met its metabolic pathway uh, could be affected by the immune system. And if that is the case, it means serotonin will be affected. So if, if you have endolamine dioxygenase here, it means the tryptophan will go to L-chironine instead of going the, the right way. And that's a way of diverging. And this IFNS, is one of the inflammatory biomarkers that can easily shift the production of serotonin. Altered HPA axis functioning, pro-inflammatory cytokines activate the HPA axis, may downregulate glucocorticoid receptor centrally, causes increased cortisol release. Corticosteroids are normally anti-inflammatory, but during prolonged stress and pro-inflammatory NCNS, uh, increased uh, IL-1 beta and TNF alpha. So HBA axis seem to play a major role connecting all these systems. Activating microglia, I produced uh, increased uh, levels of uh, IL-1, IL-6, TNF, and MCP, and that means more macrophages and cause damage through reactive oxygen species, increased IDO expression, some mice models lacking H8OXBA, display OCD-like grooming behavior. So microglia, which in the past used to be thought as just uh, have no function, it gradually becoming more and more clear that it's uh, playing a critical role. Anxiety and the immune function, psychological stress, and you can see here, the difference between uh, the ma maltreated persons and the control and uh, how different is the, the immune response represented by L IL-6. Also, if you take PTSD, there has been uh, a lot of immune changes in PTSD. And these immune changes summarized here is showing definitely a big role of cytokines in PTSD, uh, that there is increased inflammatory biomarkers in this uh, important disorder. Immune and HbA changes in PTSD, there is increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, with different names, increased IL-6 response time to trauma, and that may predict BTSD at six months, even by inflammatory marker, 
in a way you can guess who is going to develop PTSD and who is not. HBA dysfunction, uh, this would reduce the CSF and C CRF, increase circulating cortisol, increased response sensitivity. In OCD, this is another evidence to show the role of IL-1 beta that is reduced in OCD. Biological mechanism of post-traumatic inflammatory induced depression. And this is a new uh, area of uh, research that uh, somehow emphasized the importance of the inflammatory processes that are triggered by trauma. That's why numerous biological mechanisms through which depression can develop after TBI, inflammatory mediators by cytokines and elevated with central nervous system uh, injury, including TBI. These markers have been linked to depression in neurologically intact adults and patients with TBI. Higher acute CSF levels of uh, SVAM1 and others associated with significant increase in risk of depression six months after traumatic brain injury. High acute CSF level of IL-12 were associated with, uh, with the same uh, phenomenon. Inflammation occurring early after TBI may contribute to long-term chronic inflammation, hence chronic risk of depression. Cytokines and tumor necrosis factor have been associated with MDD. Increased pro-inflammatory cytokines can result in damping uh, of brain-derived neurotrophic factor expression, which may contribute to depression. Serum BDNF level during the first week after TBI may be indicative of risk for the development of PTD after by one year. So in traumatic brain injury, you see the inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokines, uh, which can lead to fatigue, low interest and slowing, and this will lead to malaise and uh, feeling personal failure. Uh, also the this could go on to sickness behavior, acute, adaptive, uh, specific symptoms, fever, malaise, and then depression progression to specific symptoms, suicidal ideation, all symptoms of depression. And if it comes through IL-7 and IL-12, it comes to shared symptom. If it comes to mood change, impulsivity at, through BNF, BNF it also comes here, and the chronic biofeedback from neuroinflammatory uh, neurodegeneration will reflect back inflammation and go through this cycle. And here, the outcome will be the transition from acute uh, adaptive sickness behavior to chronic maladaptive depression and immune dysfunction. <laughs> This is another complicated uh, map, but it can simply show that trauma could end up in many complications. Uh, in the past, trauma was always associated with injury, and then psychiatric disorder is defined by the area affected. But actually, the clinical experience never showed that, you see that sometimes the minimal brain uh, injury or even concussion carries a lot of psychiatric co consequences more than even the severe head injury. Here it says, it clearly says that this trauma, even if it's small, it has triggered CRH and then goes to locus cereolus, neurodenergic nerve, 
and then uh, the cytokines, the and also the solitary nucleus to vagus nerve and the inflammatory mediator, and it's just everything is connected. You see, more many of these arrows are bidirectional. I'm just simply want to say that we to in this century scientists have to cross the barrier and there is nothing called research in psychiatry and research in immunology and see it should be research that is including all these areas together and then uh, and that makes uh, the understanding of human health and human illness more uh, clear and uh, give the chance to develop better ways of diagnosis, biomarkers, and treatment. In immunology, there are simple facts that you have the innate natural immunity and adaptive specific immunity. The N1 is the rapid response through cells and that has no memory and no specificity and uh, diversity is low. But the adaptive one is a slow response, but works on lymphocyte, has memory and specific high lymphocyte, can distinguish among 10 a trillion antigen. Diversity extremely high, proteins, antibodies, B, test, B cells, and cytokines, helper T cells. Acquired immunity, the role of P and T lymphocyte, could you could be it could be cell mediated immunity through the thymus thymus gland to the T lymphocyte or humoral to the B lymphocyte. And lymphocytes mean number per mill is two. 1,500, 2% are in the blood and 4% in the skin, 10% in bone marrow, 15 in mucosal lymphoid tissue, 65% in spleen and lymph nodes. Lifespan is days or year, two years. Macrophage and macro, microglia interaction. The macrophage, as you know, is, uh, can be activated uh, by tissue presence specific, especially in adipose tissue. And here, the resting microglia uh, is activated through psychosocial stressors. And here, through the blood brain barrier, there are the, these biomarkers can share this, what's happening in the brain and in the body easily through the biomarker. Inflammation induced uh, death of astrocytes. Uh, astrocytes were stimulated across 96 hours time course to assess the extent of cell loss following IL-1 beta and TNF alpha treatment. Cell numbers were quantified by counting Hodgson stains nuclear. And it was clear that astrocyte death can die because of inflammation. And so it's not unusual that people who get very heavy and strong inflammation end up with some brain changes. Cytomegalovirus infection associated with a small dentate gyrus in men with severe mental illness. Dentate gyrus volume in millimeter in cytomegalovirus immunoglobulin G, IgG, zero, zero negative uh, and zero positive, men and women with, with severe mental illness, men had significantly smaller dentate gyrus volume than men um, that CMV negative men and the DJ volume in CMV negative and positive male and female healthy control. Simply, this is saying 
that this viral infection can affect the size of dentate gyrus in severe mental illness. At the time of COVID-19, there was clear uh, evidence to say that the odd ratio for patients with psychiatric disorder to be hospital or mood disorder in specific to be more in hospitalized and have mortality is higher than the general population. And that uh, was repeated in many studies. And also we knew that high prevalence of adverse neurologic and psychiatric outcome and survivor of COVID-19 at six months have reached a very high record. Patient with who developed encephalopathy reached up to 60%. And in ICU patient up to 45%, hospitalized patient 38%, non-hospitalized 31%. And if you take all together, it's about 33%. And you see that uh, uh, any neuropsychiatric outcome uh, is usually higher. But if you take anxiety, uh, mood and anxiety or psychotic disorder, they constitute the majority of this. Uh, effect in here in these levels, here it constitutes one half. High prevalence of inflammation of depression. This is now established fact that a uh, high level of inflammatory markers is present in depression. Uh, and this has been shown repeatedly uh, in different. Uh, inflammatory biomarker uh, as shown in this diagram. C-reactive peptide is elevated in bipolar disorder. In this meta-analysis, it shows clearly that by in bipolar disorder, you could see high C-reactive protein. And probably we never used to give notice to C-reactive protein as non-specific, but when you do a study and you observe, you do control, you will realize that there is definite higher level of C-reactive protein. You see healthy young man with acute psychosis, and he has this high uh, C-reactive protein. Inflammation in the brain of person with depression, if you compare here, MDD, schizophrenia, and healthy control, you can see that in this uh, 32 patient with schizophrenia and 30 with MDD and 35 control, the, there was clear difference. It's definitely higher in schizophrenia and high in depression than healthy control. Inflammatory cytokines complement factor H and anhedonia and drug naive major depression, plasma level of CFH and uh, inflammatory cytokines in drug naive MDD patient and healthy control. And in each part represent the mean level of CFH and cytokines. Error bars represent the standard deviation, abbreviation, as you see. And this is simply also saying that anhedonia, which is sometimes the one of the residual symptoms that prevent the full remission, is related to a higher level of inflammatory processes. Glutamate and CRP correlation, it's also shown here that high CRP in MDD is correlated with CSF psychotokinase kinds and symptomatology. And that is uh, clearly related to glutamate. And uh, on a behavior scale, you go from the periphery, blood brain barrier, CSF, behavior changes and symptom. Here you get the anhedonia, here you get the reduced motivation. And if you go to basal ganglia glutamate, you can see the relation with the CRP 
at these three levels of uh, low, medium, and high. It, in other words, 25 to 40 percent of patients with MDD have high CRP. Inflammation linked to phenomenology of mood disorder, anxiety, and psychomotor retardation reward that hypervigilance protection from attack, its arousal alarm leads to anxiety, go to the, uh, the cortex, dorsal anterior cortico, cortical uh, uh, area, and the withdrawal symptom here, you have fatigue and hedonia depression, and that is affecting basal ganglia, and the inflammatory cytokines go to both areas. High CRP level correlates with decreased function, connectivity, and reward circuit. And here is the plasma CRP, low, moderate, and severe. And you can see that the psychomotor retardation, decreased motor control, reduced psychomotor speed is clearly related to the prefrontal cortex, the VM, the part of it. And uh, here is the anhedonia, decreased effort, expenditure, reinforcement learning. Here you see that the dopamine is affected by the inflammatory kinase, macrophage, TLC T cells, and the liver is secreting CRP according to these uh, inflammatory uh, molecules. Uh, so what are the sources of pro-inflammation in mood disorder? There are genetic factor and environmental. What's interesting that there, are, has, there have been a lot of studies on the social determinants like poverty, loneliness, trauma, behavior like cigarette smoking, sleep disturbance in chron chronobiology, comorbidity, obesity, and metabolic diet and microbiota, which uh, this takes you in a wide field. And every one of these could be the topic of a huge multi-center research. To, to see some of the uh, research re results. Here is the uh, inflammatory activity with larger neural response to threat and reward among children living in, pro in po poverty. So in poverty, it's uh, there is a relation of uh, household income ratio and inflammation as a function of bilateral amygdala reactivity to angry faces, yeah. which means Yet poverty is, is not only working in the air that because I am poor, I feel miserable. No, it works through various mechanisms, uh, through amygdala and uh, a reaction to threat. And this, this effect, uh, as you can see here, from poverty to high income, how different it is and the uh, effect of the amygdala. And when you take this in relation to inflammation as a function of bilateral ventral striatal reactivity to monetary reward, it's also very clear that you can see the difference between different and outcome. So when we talk about more prevalence of certain disorders in poor areas, uh, we are we have to be based on this scientific research and just not merely saying giving these people some money uh, will make a difference. It may make a difference for temporarily, but it will make it has to if you want the recovery, there has to be a change from poverty to low income or mid-income. Loneliness, it's another area now that a lot of research is talking about the epidemic of loneliness, which is starting in the West, 
it was spreading all over the world. And the mechanism of loneliness is quite fascinating because you can see how loneliness could affect dopaminergic system, insulin resistance, and inflammation. And that accordingly uh, is affected and affecting the secure attachment versus insecure attachment, temperament, uh, resilience, uh, and all, uh, even a childhood experiences, and also the heartbreak that could damage the social network, lead to grief, unemployment, other proximal factors. All this could uh, benefit could be beneficial. There could be uh, important to know the effect on disorder and health of loneliness. And two, this is an area where preventive uh, psychiatry should should work strongly because re by reducing loneliness through social measures and policy makers measures, uh, you could reduce the uh, very high level of depression around the world. In major depression, cytokine levels uh, related to childhood trauma, but not to recent stress. Yes, and this has shown clearly that childhood uh, sexual abuse is associated with increased inflammatory markers and uh, no surprise, increase, increasing mental illness. Adiposity, inflammation and depression, uh, as you know, the normal abdominal uh, adipocyte, uh, uh, when it's accumulated and in enlarged abdominal adipocyte, lead to many changes in, in these factors and hormones. And this would lead to various changes. That is to say that the high alcoholic intake that leads to accumulation of levels in adipocyte, increased level contents, and increase the release of MCB1, CCL2, and chemo attractant that increase the inflammation of macrophages into adipose tissue. Both adipocytes and macrophages release inflammatory mediators such as IL-6 TNF alpha into the peripheral circulation. So the relation between body mass index and neuropsychiatric symptom and evidence of inflammatory correlate. The prevalence of uh, current MDD according to DSM criteria Panel A and MADRS total score in the study population uh, showed that, uh, that the, the demonstrate in the study that overweight, the depressive symptoms and circulating concentration of inflammatory markers in obese subjects and lean subject. And simply to say that body mass and they affect your inflammatory processes, immune response, and accordingly psychiatric manifestation. Uh, high inflammation, lower adipo uh, nectine correlate with ketamine response. And that's uh, Another interesting area to show that ketamine treatment that is now being used worldwide is also helping to reduce the inflammatory uh, processes and through that could be one of its mechanism for action. High level of inflammation and metabolic alteration and like in obesity, more likely to respond to L-methyl folate. And at one point, you remember that methyl folate 
was in recommended of field for resistant depression. And, and it shows here that there is more effect as there is obesity for methyl folate. During COVID uh, pandemic, there was reports about fluvoxamine. Uh, surprisingly, that patients who are, were taking fluvoxamine were have less the clinical deterioration. And uh, for me, there, that wasn't surprising. For me, I thought that should be the case, but I believe this was a very strong evidence for researchers now to dig into the effect of antidepressant on inflammatory processes. Another interesting study about monoclonal antibody treatment, uh, infliximab, which is used quite commonly by immunologists and dermatologists, it demonstrate the antidepressant property in adults with bipolar depression reporting history of physical abuse. And this is one uh, fascinating area that people improved their depression just simply with this uh, monoclonal antibody. And this monoclonal antibody is available in the market. I'm not sure when it will have approved indication to be used for depression or resistant depression. Statins used for dyslipidemia uh, in major depression and this systematic review, uh, it was clear that statin favors the outcome when given to depressed patients. Potential mechanisms through which exercise reduce chronic inflammation and obesity that in exercise training, the muscle tissue lead to increased IL-6, so in decreased pro-inflammatory cytokinase, increased anti-inflammatory cytokinase. In adipose tissue, increased angiogenesis, decreased vasoconstriction, and lead to macrophage, less macrophage infiltration. In endothelial cell, decreased adhesion, increased risk regulation and vascular wall inflammation. Immune cell, decreased toll-like receptor, inflammatory monocyte, regulatory T cell. And the end result of exercise training is reduced systemic inflammation. And by reducing systemic inflammation, that improves physical and mental health. So it's not a, a something out of this, out of science to say that exercise help both medical, physical and mental health. Mindfulness work as anti-inflammatory agent. In this study, uh, it was uh, used to reduce psychological stress by inflammation to be reduced physical to by using tubical application of uh, capsicum cream. And then the result that MIBRSR resulted in significantly smaller post-stress inflammatory response compared to HB, this by the equivalent uh, levels of stress hormone. So mindfulness, yoga, relaxation work not only on the cerebral cortex, but also work on anti-inflammatory agent. Restorative sleep result in lower inflammation. The restorative sleep group had significantly significant reduction in CRP concentration and depression sym symptom, as well as reduced fatigue and improvement in emotional well-being, social function, and physical functioning at follow. So a good night's sleep so seems to improve uh, the inflammatory processes. And uh, the old standard rule 
in medicine that you have infection, inflammation, have some bed rest and get more sleep is valid and there is evidence for that. It's not just sort of empirical advice. Social network ties and inflammation. Uh, individuals with lower social network score showed significantly greater inflammation marked by CRP and fibrinogen. Gut microbiome and depression. Uh, definitely, we had previous talk about it, that microbiota, it's affected in, by the immune activity, affecting vagal, vagal efferent, uh, reaching the peripheral immune system, HbA axis, prefrontal cortex, and uh, affected by stress, and all this can be going to depression. And so microbiota, uh, in a sense, is part of this inflammatory process because it has, uh, there is a production of uh, inflammatory markers. And that's uh, all what I wanted to say. There are many references. If, I, if anybody is interested, I will uh, be sharing this with you. Thank you thank, very much. Thank you, Dr. Walid, for this very interesting and up-to-date uh, review. Uh, I will uh, break the rules. I will not comment now. I will leave my comments to the end because I have a lot of comments. Uh, so I will uh, uh, open the floor for discussion. Uh, and usually we ask our colleagues one by one. Uh, Dr. Sudad. شكرا جزيلا على هذه المحاضرة الرائعة بالحقيقة اللي أكون مشكور إذا نستطيع نستعمل الشرائح الموجودة فيها بس أنا عندي بعض يعني وجهة نظر حول الموضوع طبعا ال P and I أو كما يعني سايكو in neuro endocrine endocrine immunology but the moment we are the guy at the hamia and what it tell us is everything is connected with everything okay now i think uh, it's not really uh, a new concept but has been ignored actually i mean as you all know i mean claude bernard uh, the french uh, physiologist introduced the concept then Cannon introduced the concept of milieu interior. And then there is a chap who is in Cornell University who did his PhD and found that really the immune system is affected by our psychology. That's, I think, in 1975. Uh, however, what is also, you know, the area of inflammation and the psych and the endocrine I think what has been lost, I think if you look at all the research published, there is too much emphasis on the cytokines. Okay, there is this reciprocal relationship between the cytokines and so on. And this hasn't moved forward. When you move, look at the research and you look at the, uh, uh, you know, try to review some of the papers, you always find it is the same thing, you know, with regard to the cytokines, different kind. And I think this has led to some kind of malaise about uh, what to do next. However, I think there are certain structures in our brain, I think we need to, be, we need to focus on. And I think the research uh, currently is trying to focus, in my opinion, on the uh, uh, six structures that have been lost. I mean, the first one is the pineal gland. Pineal gland is the most ancient part of the biology of living the creatures, and it's melatonin. And you know, melatonin also has been subjected to so much research uh, in human and in animal, animals. Then there is the cerebral uh, cannabinoid system. Then we have the cognitive activity of the cerebellum. This is also something which is interesting. The thymus gland, we all been ignored for a while, and of course, there is even the chemoreceptors of the heart and the coccygeal 
a gland. So what happened? I mean, nowadays when we, uh, you know, you lecture on that subject, you try to emphasize the issue about this interaction between the psychology, physics, and biology. And this is the wonderful thing that Dr. Walid presented to us is that connection between biology, psychology, and physics, which end up really, sometimes mm -hmm. you think of the human being uh, being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, operating under two systems. One of them is the opiate system, which is connected to the pituitary and the hypothalamus. That system is really what is activated when we're trying to cope with the stress of daily life. So how do we cope, you know, with all the stress that we encounter from all departments? You hear the news, you go to work, and so on. And then there is the other system which is connected to the pineal gland, although in the cerebrum, and that is uh, uh, what we call the cannabinoid system. This is our conscious life and probably also the subconscious. Just see really something of, of how I look at that concept for a while. It's the most interesting and the most informative lecture. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dr. Sudad. Uh, Dr. Marwan. أنا مبسوط لكم معكم زمان ما التقيناش كالعادة محاضرة علمية شاملة من خبير ومحتلا نتبع كل التفاصيل فمحاضرة رائعة قسم كبير منها مصطلحات طبية لأنا ما أقدرش أتبعها في خارج تخصصاتي ليش الوحيد اللي بقدر هيك أشارك فيه هو يعني فكرة في بالي من من مدة العلاقة بين الإميون سيستم والديفنس ميكانيزمز يعني أنا بلاحظ من حالات اللي بشوفها بشوف مرات علاقة بين الناس اللي عندهم أوتو إميون ديزيز وبين كيف الديفنس ميكانيزمز تشتل ضد ضد الذات ضد أنفسهم وحسب الطرح اللي طرحه الدكتور وليد في هاي المحاضرة كله سيستم واحد فبنقدر نفرض انه يعني الاوتو ميون الاميون سيستم بيشتغل بموازاه للديفنس ميكانيزمز يعني اذا في اوفر رياكشن في الاميون سيستم ممكن يكون في اوفر رياكشن في الديفنس ميكانيزمز اذا في يعني هبوط في الاداء الاميون سيستم كمان ممكن يكون هبوط في اداء الديفنس ميكانيزمز هذا مجال للبحث اللي انا من مدي بحضر هيك اقتراح لبحث وبفتش على شريك من من العالم الطبي اللي بيقدر يوصل لمرضى اللي عندهم مشاكل بالايميون سيستم ان كان اوتو ايميون ديزيز او اي شيء ثاني ونفحص العلاقه بين الديفنس ميكانيزمز وبين الايميون سيستم الفانكشناليتي تبعت الطرفين بحب اسمع رايكم بالفكره اولا وطبعا اذا في حدا مستعد يشارك في بحث من هذا النوع فبكل سهوله دكتور وليد تحب تجاوب على يعني الحقيقه اللي تفضلت فيه يعني وسط هذا الكلام ليس هناك غرابه في ان تكون الديفنس ميكانيزم كاحد الفانكشن اوف ذا سايكي انفولد في الامراض المناعيه وهذا هذه الدراسه ستكون لطيفه اذا اجريت على مجموعه لنقل اللي عندهم مرض معين مثل سيستميك لوبس على سبيل المثال اللي هي الذئبه الحمراء هذا مرض يعني كميه السايكولوجيكال تشينجز اللي فيه هائله واخذ عينه من عيادات ومراكز الاميونولوجي will be very interesting study to see defense mechanism and others. Uh, I, I totally uh, agree that this will be a fascinating study, but it has the, 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 the sample has to come from immunology clinics, yes. not from psychiatric clinics. Physicians. And this would be, okay. um, I think, uh, if it comes to share, I'm sure everybody here would be willing to help. 
اوكي دكتور امين قبل ما حضرتك تقرا التعليق مالتك بس اخدمني شلون الفظ اللقب عندي مشكله في لفظ لقبك تفضل الاسم ال... انا الم... اسمي محمد امين الحيحي الحيحي نعم تفضل استاذ اهلين تحياتي يعطيكم العافيه yeah. وشكرا جزيلا للدكتور وليد سرحان على المحاضره القيمه يعني العلميه الشامله في الحال انا عندي يعني نقطتين بحب احكي فيهم من موضوع الكلينيكال ورك اللي انا حاليا بعمله يعني لاحظت من خلال عملي في الفيرست ايبيسود سايكوسيز او الايرلي انترفنشن لانه احنا بنكون مسؤولين عن الحاله الصحيه لهي المرضى لما يتحولوا علينا فبنعمل لهم بلاد تيست وفيزيكال هيلث تشيك واي سي جي الى اخره فلاحظت انه في اسوسيشن يعني بين ديابيتس اند ديبريشن وبعد عدة اختبارات أجرينا عليهم لاحظنا إنه الـ high level of the cytokinase اللي هو responsible حالياً يعني زي ما تفهمنا للموضوع للإنسولين resistance اللي بيكون السبب في ديابيتس وخاصة إذا بيكونوا المرضى من الشباب يعني في الـ early intervention هاي نقطة حبيت أحكي فيها لأنه فعلا زي ما تفضل الدكتور وليد يعني حكاية الأوبيزيتي والديابيتس اللي خاصة يعني في بلاد العالم اللي بتقدم يعني وفي اللو انكم كونتريز بتكون ان ايدنتيفايد يعني الديابيتس في هاي الحالة و يعني مهم جدا انه نتعرف على الموضوع بشكل افضل وحاليا في دراسات عديدة على الموضوع النقطة الثانية اللي بحب أحكي فيها لو سمحتوا لاحظت في عدة يعني حالات من خلال عملي إنه الناس اللي بياخذوا كلوزابين بيصير عندهم مرات يعني من لما نعمل البلاد تيست للمونيترينج للكلوزابين بتطلع النتيجة أمبر on a couple of times وفي هاي الحالة طبعا احنا لازم نوقف الكلوزابين لكن هم كلينيكالي كانوا فاين they are well يعني ما كان في عندهم any signs or symptoms of severe infection الليوكوسايتوسيز يعني it goes down في الليوكوبينيا فطبعا هذا بيكون خطر او في حكاية الليوكوسايتوسيز بنوقف الدواء لكن انا يعني من خلال اهتمامي في الموضوع حاولت اني اتقرب من كونسلتنت موجود عندنا هيماتولوجيست ودرسنا الوضع يعني اللي لاحظته انه هدول يعني كان في عدد يعني قليل طبعا اثنين او ثلاثه يعني اللي لاحظته انه الاميون سيستم عندهم بيكون ريسبونسبل فور الليوكوبينيا ما بيكون في مرض معين وفعلا يعني لما زدنا حكايه الجروث فاكتور ثيرابي اعطاهم بعض الجرعات من الجروث فاكتور المرضى تحسنوا ورجعنا نعطيهم الكلوزابين فانا يعني بشوف انه في حاله مهمه في الموضوع في حكايه الاميون سيستم اللي ريسبونسبل في الليوكوبينيا اللي بصير عند الناس وهم فعلا يعني فيزيكالي بيكونوا فاين فحبيت احكي في هذا الموضوع وشكرا جزيلا شكرا شكرا دكتور امين يعني احنا بالحقيقه بنرحب فيك باول مره بتلتقي دكتور امين كونسلتنت في يو كي وانضم مؤخرا للجروب وسيكون له محاضره قريبا شكرا دكتور امين على وجودك تفضل دكتور نزار نتشرف بوجودك دكتور امين تحياتي آه شكرا Uh, I would like to comment uh, and add a few words uh, about what Dr. Walid said. The first one, I will start with the history. Uh, he's correct that uh, uh, Adair, uh, who was a psychologist, by the way, Professor Marwan, 
uh, there and uh, two, another person who is an immunologist called Cohen, they together, in fact, they coined uh, the term psychoneuroimmunology uh, in the year 1975, and they have a shared publication. Uh, another person called uh, uh, another name uh, in 1981, uh, he coined the term uh, neuroimmunology, uh, Cedric Rain, Cedric Rain, and he concentrated or stressed the fact that a lot of evidence uh, showed that late onset neurodegenerative diseases fall within this uh, uh, field of neuroimmunology, and he gave examples, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, uh, spinal cerebellar ataxia, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Huntington's disease, as well as some behavioral and mood disorders. Altogether, he called them inflammaging, inflammation and aging together. And these include behavioral and mood disorders. And of course, the field uh, advanced a lot uh, with the introduction of MRI, SPECT, uh, PET, and uh, tissue staining techniques. They were very helpful. And this field is, is useful in the future, as Dr. Walid correctly said, to find vaccination strategies to prevent uh, diseases before they occur, as well as, well as uh, genetically modified, uh, modified uh, treatments for many of these disorders through the biomarkers. Uh, another thing which is very important to mention is uh, Glaser uh, demonstrated the impact of a behavior such as stress through the immune system on wound healing, on cancer progression, and response to vaccination. And they stressed the role of the immune system, uh, which was recognized on many medical conditions, including uh, Alzheimer's disease, traumatic brain injury, as well as schizophrenia and uh, depression. Uh, Wellcome Foundation, and I'm sure Dr. Sudad knows what is Wellcome uh, Trust or Foundation, they are really supporting the work uh, on uh, the subject of psychosis and immunology, and they stress what Dr. Walid correctly said, it needs collaboration between uh, neurosciences, immunology, academia, and industry, all together in partnership in order to move the wheel uh, forward. Uh, two key points are very important in, in what Dr. Walid said. The first one is the immunological biomarkers, and the second one, therapeutics targeting the immune system. Uh, because, uh, for example, nowadays we have patients, uh, they have uh, the same symptoms, and they uh, be given the same diagnosis, but could have different underlying pathologies. Okay, and this applies to psychosis. Therefore, in psychosis, studies should show a clear relationship between serious early life infection and psychos psychosis uh, uh, later on, which is very important. Nowadays, uh, they stress, especially pediatricians uh, and community uh, doctors or family doctors, they stress the fact that we should take childhood infections very seriously because they might lead to psychosis later on uh, in life. Uh, of course, increased levels of peripheral inflammation at psychosis onset, such as interleukin-6, inter, uh, INF uh, gamma, and uh, cortisol, the, these have been associated with clinical status, uh, different status, and lack of response to antipsychotics. Sometimes you have patients who do not respond to antipsychotics, so this is the explanation according to those people. As far as depression is concerned, major dep uh, depressive disorders associated with high uh, CRP, uh, and especially this applies to treatment-resistant depression. Uh, and among them, as he correctly said, Dr. Walid, a group of depressed people who are obese, they have sleep disturbance and anxiety, suggesting that a clinical subgroup of those patients have inflammatory phenotype, and that's why they don't respond, or even if they respond, they don't respond properly to that. Uh, he mentioned infleximab, I don't want to uh, repeat it. Uh, acute stress, uh, referring to the HPA uh, axis, acute stress enhances innate and adaptive responses in the human being, but chronic stress 
can suppress immunity by decreasing immune cells numbers, and of course, um, uh, uh, decreasing the function of the immune system. Uh, and this, of course, applies with patients with major depressive uh, disorders. Now, uh, I would like really to end by saying that uh, uh, the, the, I have one criticism uh, to the papers, not to Dr. Walid, to the papers which were uh, I read and Dr. Walid uh, presented also, and they talk about uh, lack of response. Uh, they think that it is purely due to uh, immunological uh, or link between immunology and psychiatry. Well, peoples in the pharmacogenetics also claim that it is the pharmacogenetics that leads that to somebody responding to this drug and another body responding to another drug, and it's the same disease and the same diagnosis. So my criticism is that, well, it's not a criticism, it's an addition, that it's not only the immune side of it, it is really the, the genetics also, which is a relatively new field and people are really stressing on that. The last one, uh, again, that I want to add, Dr. Walid correctly said that antidepressants have anti-inflammatory uh, effects, true, and at the same time, I'm sure he knows that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are also thought to be having an effect and uh, probably in the future, they will be used for treating depression. These are the additions that I wanted to add and thank you very much. If there is anyone else who would like to ask a question or make a comment before we close, please. دكتور وليد كلمة أخيرة. يعني يعني في دكتورة صفية. تفضلي دكتورة صفية. يعني لا يعني لا بس في شكر. فالحقيقة يعني أنا هذا الموضوع عادة كل موضوع مثل هذا بكون مشغول فيه لشهور. فكمية الريسيرش اللي موجودة فيه هيوج mm -hmm. I only have sort of picked up a few among thousands of papers and uh, very very deep and comprehensive uh, Dr. Marwan said that they are full of terms even many of these terms we as psychiatrists don't actually Yes. No, well, because they are pure immunological terms and only immunologists uh, understand the exact function of every uh, inflammatory uh, cytokine, what this will do and how, what is the consequences of increased of this or that. So it is a complicated area, but I believe that this is how science would be in the next 10 to 20 years, and that a lot of things in medicine will change, and a lot of uh, things uh, that were never clearly understood will be more understood, and that will end up in better uh, treatment, whether it's medication or even psychological treatment, uh, there could be an indicator to say, in this patient, psychological treatment is better. In this, that patient, treatment with antidepressant and anti-inflammatory. In another patient, just antibodies would, would do the job. Uh, and that was the talk about individualized medicine. Yes. and precision medicine yes. uh, in the future uh, well, that is tailored for everybody. And that is not the story of uh, one treatment for fits all. I hope this, is, uh, this open our mind to look up uh, and search these topics, understand it, make observation like Dr. Amin said, uh, this is very challenging sometimes when patients start having leukopenia and they only improved in Livonix and so on. So there are many clinical challenges at the present. We all hope 
to see any any uh, any any practical uh, advice, any recommendation to help such patient and to get go on with our clinical work. Uh, I hope in the future uh, we will have more about this topic uh, and uh, probably also we'll hear the research from Dr. Marwan once he finished that. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, shukran jazeera للجميع ونلتقي يمكن بعد اسبوعين مو دكتور وليد؟ لا الاسبوع القادم uh, uh, سليم. اوكي. Okay. زكي من مصر. اوكي okay. شكرا جزيلا نلتقي الاسبوع القادم في نفس الوقت uh, تصبحون على خير. تصبحون على خير.